Hey y'all, Chef Sarah here and welcome back to Freight House. Today we are going to take a store-bought spiral cut ham, make it super fancy. So let's get started. So, in my family, we call it zhuzhin, zhuzhin, like you zhuzh it up. I don't know how to spell that. So if you know, let me know in the comments. Yeah, so we're gonna take this a spiral cut store. It's like a ham, it's from Ozark Pride, which is in Missouri, so it's a local ham to our area. Um, you know, let them do all the hard work. Let them cure it, let them smoke it, let them spiral cut it, let them do everything. But what we're gonna do is we're not gonna use the little package of glaze that comes with the ham. We're gonna make our own and it's gonna have a gajillion ingredients in it, but you can kind of follow my lead and do this at home with anything. I'm kind of being inspired right now by like Sandra Lee with her semi-homemade or like Rachel Ray with her 30 minute meals, like way back old school cooking shows where they would take something and they would just make it better. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's what you should be doing at home too. Super easy. So we're gonna start two cups, brown sugar, I like dark brown sugar. All right, next, Dijon mustard, quarter cup. Add it in. Orange marmalade, half cup, put it in. Tablespoon of smoked paprika. Tablespoon of ground ginger. Tablespoon of onion. Tablespoon of garlic. I've got some ground fennel seed in here. Half a teaspoon of red chili flake. A little bit of dry mustard. I really like Coleman's dry mustard. Um, I think it's just like the old school in me. I could never veer away from it. So the thing we're gonna do to make it a little bit different, is we're gonna add black vinegar. I love black vinegar. If you don't have black vinegar, use Worcestershire. It's just like a fermented vinegar. It's made with rice wine. It's like a rice wine vinegar, but it's black. Probably like a tablespoon. And then fish sauce. I like this brand fish sauce. Um, it's the Vietnamese brand, three crabs. It doesn't actually have any crab in it. It's shellfish free, in case you have somebody that. Do about a tablespoon. It just gives it this like super umami. Um, it has salt, it's very salty. Uh, so it gives it like a really nice flavor. And then this is what's so difficult, you mix that up. You just keep on mixing. So you can see it just becomes, it's really thick. You want it to be super thick. Because if you put it on it's thin, it's just gonna run right off. Now, um, you know, it's super classic to cook pork in Dr. Pepper, very Southern. So I like to start with a little bit of Dr. Pepper in the bottom of my pan. That's maybe like a half a can of Dr. Pepper. You don't need a ton. If you don't want Dr. Pepper, do water. I got a little whiskey, I like to put a little whiskey in there. Save one sip for me. That was maybe like a quarter cup of whiskey. Then this is gonna get wrapped up. It's gonna go in the oven on 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes. So we're gonna imagine that it's come out now, it's been in there. And then you're gonna take, and this is gonna go right on top. And once you add the glaze, you're gonna leave it uncovered. There's no need to like take the time to rub it all over everything. This will go in the oven for about 35 to 45 minutes, covered with foil, 350, let it cook, take it out, then do a big heaping scoop of your glaze right on top. Don't spread it out, it's gonna start to melt. Leave it uncovered and cook it for about 20 minutes. Take it out, another batch of glaze, 20 more minutes. If you feel like it's not getting really caramelized and crispy, just turn your oven up for a little bit, it'll be okay. It's gonna be hard to overcook this and hard to dry it out. Just be gentle. All right, y'all. So fancy pants, ham, store-bought, but now it's like, way better than the little brown sugar glaze that comes in the package. So this has been chilling for a few minutes so that I can handle it. We, we wanna let it rest. It's like anytime you cook any piece of meat, even if it's an already cooked piece of ham, still give it a second to relax and chill out. 
So we're going to take this bad boy. Oh my God. You know, we never ate ham growing up. I guess it was just like, why would a bunch of Jews have a ham? But after I got married, um, they always have ham at like every holiday. And it's so delicious. I just love it. This is a problem I have like in my fingers when I'm cooking something like this. So you can see the bone still in here. It's really got like a, can you get that mic check? It's crispy, it's crunchy. It's gonna be super juicy inside and really have a lot of crisp outside. So I'm gonna show you guys how to carve one of these. There's gonna be a bone right in the middle. We're gonna just kind of start to carve off around the bone. So. your fingers, lay it out, let me try this. Mm. Like the fish sauce and garlic, a little bit of chili flake, it kind of gives it a new dimension. So I'm gonna go over here, just follow that bone around. I like to just shingle them a little bit. Stay. Do the same thing here. Again, we're just carving around the bone. There's that little top piece. And let's do this side first. And this is a significant amount of food, you know. I would say this would feed, mm, you know, eight goyams. I'd say that. <laughs> Put that right there. Mm. Oh my god, that piece looks divine. There's one big bone right down the middle. So don't. Um, if you can, if you you know want to, but I wouldn't say throw this away and or give it to your dog. I'd save it. I'd put it right back in here with this juice that we had. A lot of this probably isn't going to get eaten, so you have two options. You can take this juice after this is done. You can pour it all over it, or if you want to get your ham ready before people come, put this into like a you know a little a dish and then pour your juice in there and it'll keep everything nice and moist. Or you can chop up some of the leftovers, throw a bone in there with some beans, throw that juice in there and cook beans and make ham and beans. So that's what I would make for my husband is like white beans and ham with cornbread. So that's it, you guys, super easy. Uh, if you like this recipe and you want more ideas like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Here, here, I don't know, somewhere. And then don't go watch somebody else's YouTube channels. Just stay here and watch mine. There's tons of stuff and it's fun. Bye, you guys. I'll tell you what, if no one was around and I was like left with this plate of ham, I would totally be that asshole that just like took the knife and like carved off all the crispy parts and ate it.